just makes it perfect. This just makes it perfect. We're behind. They're all fired up. We got the class, we're going to find it out. We got the class, and I know we got it. And what we got to do, first place, our defense has got to go out there and take the ball. Our defense hasn't been taking the ball. We've got to take the ball, otherwise we're not going to get it enough. Okay, can we get together? <laughs> All we need is just somebody that wants to do some leadership out there. Now we go. Come on, hit. Come on, Clinton, go stick somebody. Defense. To play it right, there's a simple rule taught by every college coach. It's better to give than receive. In the 1920s, the South gave the defense two of its best coaches in Tennessee's General Bob Nealon and Wallace Wade of Alabama and Duke. When Bernie Beerman came to Minnesota in the mid-1930s, defense paced the Gophers to six Big Ten titles in ten years, including five national championships. The 1940s found Chuck Bednarik playing both ways at Penn, but his favorite pastime appeared to be nailing the quarterback. The first Outland Trophy honoring the outstanding interior lineman of the year went to Notre Dame's George Connor in 1946. Dick Mojuleski of Maryland was a true force against the run as he won the Outland Trophy in 1952. In 1957, Iowa's Alex Karras was an awesome tower of power as he dominated the line of scrimmage. Dick Butkus was one of the game's greatest defensive players. He was such a force as a linebacker at Illinois that he finished third in the Heisman balloting in 1964. Texas, they still boast of Tommy Nobis, a Southwest Conference superstar who could hit with the best of the breed. Alabama's Leroy Jordan was so awesome at linebacker that in the 1964 Orange Bowl versus Oklahoma, he recorded an amazing 31 tackles. Minnesota featured defensive powers Carl Eller and Bobby Bell. Over at Michigan State, one of college football's most rugged defenses was being formed. Led by number 95, Bubba Smith, and number 90, George Webster. The Spartans punished opponents as they won the Big Ten crown in 1965 and 66. For Penn State coach Joe Paterno, defense was the name of the game in the late 60s. Penn State became known as Linebacker U, with such stars as number 68 Mike Reed, Denny Ancott, Jack Ham, Randy Crowder, and Matt Millen. Penn State has produced more NFL linebackers than any other college in history. 
Over in Columbus, Ohio, Coach Woody Hayes loved to call on his defense, especially All-American linebacker Randy Gratishar. A tough Buckeye defense led Ohio State to a national championship in 1968. Maryland featured the awesome power of defensive lineman Randy White. The first family of college football defenses were the ferocious Selman brothers of Oklahoma. Dewey, Lucius, and Leroy played the game with reckless abandon. Leroy Selman, we hadn't blocked him yet. Uh, didn't even try. The last time we played against him, we, we, we totally ran away from him, or we ran options uh, where we read him, running the fullback inside, and, and it was uh, the read offense. But we never tried to block him one on one. Notre Dame's Ross Browner was considered college football's top defensive player in 1976 and 77, winning the Outland and Lombardi Awards, respectively. Pitt Panther fans will never forget the outstanding play of All-America Hugh Green. Green was so dominant that he finished second in the Heisman balloting to George Rogers. The 1980s featured a linebacker named The Boz. Oklahoma's Brian Bosworth was one of the most punishing hitters the game has ever seen. 